In this next lesson, we will look at some charts you can consider if you have data points related to date or time. Here is a line chart. Line charts allow us to see trends over time. George has covered this extensively in a previous lesson. One thing to note though, in a line chart like this, there is an assumption that lines are continuous and there is a gradual transition from one point to the next. If it is important to highlight that there is no continuity and instead highlight the magnitude of the changes, we can use what we call a step line. The difference between a step line and a regular line chart is that in a step line, we are using straight lines to connect the points together. Step lines are also useful if our data points do not represent regular intervals. One more variation of this line chart is what we call a jump chart. The jump chart is similar to a step line, but we do away with a vertical line that connects the points. We can use a jump chart if what we wish to emphasize is the length of time between changes and not necessarily the magnitude of the changes. Going back to our regular line graph, we can choose to add multiple lines in the same graph to represent different values or series. What we are seeing in this example is a chronological time axis from 2017 to 2021, and each line represents sales for a category. Having one line per category allows us to see how each category fares against other categories. But we can already see some of the downfalls of this approach. Having multiple lines can become confusing. It may not make it easy for us to compare the categories against each other. What this allows us to see, though, is the similarity of the trends for all categories in general. An alternative to having multiple lines in a single graph is to split the view into smaller charts, and each chart representing a single category. We are sacrificing a little bit of the details, but this allows us to see individual categories more clearly and still compare it with other categories side by side. If we want to show cumulative totals over time, but also provide an indication of how individual components contribute to this cumulative total, we can consider a stacked area chart. The stacked area chart shares the same benefits and drawbacks of a stacked bar graph. This chart is best to show cumulative values over time, but it's not great at all at allowing for individual parts to be compared. In this example, we can't easily see how office supplies fared against technology over time. They both don't start at the same baseline. If we are looking to show seasonality, we can use what we call a cycle plot. With cycle plots, we group together the same time period or season and see their performance across a different time period. In this example, we compare Q1 or quarter one across four years and we do the same for Q2, for Q3, and for Q4. We can also see seasonality if we overlay multiple lines in a single chart, very similar to what we have just seen earlier, but this time around, each line represents a date or a time field. In this example, we are seeing year-over-year -year comparisons. We are seeing the performance of every month across all four years. We can see how all Januarys fared against each other, and all Februarys, and so forth. A heat map can also allow us to show trends and seasonality. In this example, we simply have a matrix of colors. Months are seen across the page, and the days of the month are seen in the leftmost column, almost looking like a calendar. For this particular example, the colors are showing us that some activities are picking up later in the year, starting around September, dropping around October, but also picking up again in November and December. The heat map also allows us to pick out any days of the month that may be outside our usual or normal range of values. If the goal is to show a before and after view, we can use what we call a slope chart. The slope chart retains only two points in time, and typically this is the first point and the last point in a time series graph. 
the slope chart helps accentuate a general trend. Did something increase since we started? Did something decrease since we started? Or did it remain unchanged? A bump chart also shows trend over time, but what this chart shows easily is the change in ranking over time. Note that this chart does not highlight the magnitude of the difference between the ranks. We don't know if the difference is a dollar or ten dollars or a point or ten points or a hundred points. If the magnitude of the changes is important, then the bump chart may not be the appropriate chart to use. Or we could also use this as a complementary chart to yet another chart that allows us to show both perspectives. A strip plot shows a mark or a strip per instance. So if what is important to show or highlight is how frequent or how infrequent some instances are, this can be an effective chart. Again, this can be complemented by additional charts if actual values are important to show as well. The last of our time-related charts is a Gantt chart. You may have heard of Gantt charts before. This is a popular chart or tool used for project tracking and project management. The Gantt chart allows us to show duration of activities over time, and it also allows us to highlight concurrent activities. So if that is our goal, if that's what we want to highlight, then a Gantt chart might be the appropriate chart to use.